I was so dumb, but I hopped on a plane, almost drove right back to the 541. Shitty you turned on the freeway, you turned me from a fiend to a way to you find. Can wait in the sun for a little, but it's been real gray, and tonight it's a nice see one. Can wait in the cold for a while at the reasons of Okay, uh, we're going to start off this podcast with a question from chat. Uh, Booble asks, important question, how do you eat Skittles? A handful at a time or one at a time by color? Um, <clears throat> I, I, I don't actually do the by color thing, but sometimes I do love to throw like two in it at a time and crush them with my back molars. That is like my, that is a weird, like a- my equivalent of a fidget spinner. Yeah, the thing about Skittles, Skittles the thing shit. about Skittles too is the texture, and so like if you get that crunch with the two specifically, it feels a certain way. Yeah, I know what you I know see, what you mean, man. See, I I treat them like sunflower seeds, where you throw a mouthful in and you just peel one off at a time to chomp on the other side. Also, a good play if you're peeling one off at a time. You can go full on monster mouth, yeah. but yeah. the the people that throw them all in and mash it yeah. up. Yeah. Though I will say, it's too much. It's too much flavor at once. I was thinking but, that with your thing, Ski. That's too much flavor in your mouth at once. You can't do that many. But with a Skittle, so okay. So all Fruit Loops are the same flavor. Like that's a, a fact that yeah. we all know. I mean it. With, with Skittles, though, so let's... is the only f- is the flavoring just in the shell? Because I feel like I've found that I've put them in my mouth and sucked it off <laughs> the shell. And then the white little grainy inside is I feel like it all tastes the same. Am I wrong? I, I can't confirm or deny that because when you eat them, like by the time you get to that inner part, you have so much flavor in your mouth from whatever it's coming from that you can't tell the difference. So you're probably you're probably right. I don't know uh, though. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with you. I'm gonna say the center is a nothing flavor. It's a generic like bland. Yes, just it's just sugar. Sugar, it's just sugar yeah. is all. It yeah. is. It's a huge, it's just the shell. Huge yeah. allegation we're making right now against <laughs> against Big Skittle. Big so Skittle. yeah, we'll see. Uh, though yeah. I will say, like sometimes if I'm driving and I'm tired, I'll throw a big old I'll throw the whole load in and like suck it. And just like like a like a thing like a dipper, yeah. Well, just leave old, it in there. And... A old chaw. Yeah. Let those juices marinate. Yeah, I mean none of none of this none of this is real for King right now because of that. Oh but, yeah, but it's no. worth it. Well worth it. Yeah, but... it's all veneers. Yeah. What, <laughs> yeah. What do you think? What's worse in your mouth? Just you know, decades of dip right there, or if you did decades of Skittles right there. Honestly, Skittles, Skittles right? It's yeah. Skittles. So Skittles, it's Skittles. Would, yeah. Skittles would take out the teeth. The dip would take out the rest of it. <laughs> sure, like, like of course we're talking like cancer wise. Of course, <laughs> dip is worse. But sugar wise, like, uh, my dad used to be like a, a, a public speaker guy for like at, at risk middle or uh, inner city schools and stuff, and so he had to talk. Talk. His his voice was his muse, and he would throw it when he would go to sleep. He would throw in uh like uh sore throat lozenge things, and he put it in the same spot and just ate the fuck out of his teeth. It was so like, but that's just you know part of the sacrifice. I I suppose they're sugar, man. Those things are sugar too. People don't think about that. It's everything big, big, sugar, right? Big throat lozenge doesn't want you to know that. Yep. Big what halls if, over here. Just... What if? What about M and M's? How do we treat M and M's? Are they more because they're chocolate, way less flavor? Uh, but do you throw a bunch in your mouth at once, or do you go one or well, two at a time? I mean, only psychopaths eat just straight M and M's. You're not getting peanut or peanut butter. I don't know who you are. Wow, I, I if I I'm, died, I, I absolutely you, you eat. Straight M and M's all the time. Not all the time, but yes, I absolutely do. I eat the other kinds too. I I have had an M M&M and M problem in my life. I so back in the day, uh, is it King, bent? What are we talking about? Can you not hear us? Oh, he he all of a sudden can't hear us. Okay, cool. Um, so so at one point I worked as a delivery driver, and I used to keep quarters in my car. And I would go to restaurants and bring out my quarters to the ones I knew had M M&M and M vending machines. That's how big an M and M's I used to be. So I 
would eat M and M's. Uh, if they're the peanuts, you go one at a time. If they're and the you break little them ones, half. you do a few. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. break them in half. You absolutely break them in half with your teeth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Glad we're on the same page. King, can you hear us? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Did you lose us I, there for a minute? I did. I think the uh, the cord in my mic is uh, bent all of a sudden a little too much. You so. missed my riveting M and M's anecdote. Yeah. Well, you brought quarters, I bet. And I you were did. a delivery driver. I sure did. Yeah. 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 You re- you remember the company that was for it. That oh, no- Pony Express. That no yeah. longer exists. <laughs> they were they were really ahead of their time. They sure were. Yep. They delivered beer and wine before anybody was even thinking of that. It took COVID for the rest of the world to do that. Yeah, it did. Uh, Booble says he's a Mike and Ike guy. Oh, I love Mike and Ikes. Yeah. Bring back, uh, was it Sherry and Bub? Sherry and Bub, yeah. Sherry, Sherry and Bub, yeah. So good. Big time. Big time candy talk we're having right now. This is high. And I love hot tamales too, but I don't like the extreme fireball with sunglasses logo they do. Nope. I just want the happy sun with a couple cacti and some mountains in the back. No. That's what I grew up no, on. That, that, that sun shredding gnar now. That's for sure. I don't want anything. That sun is do doing that. meth now. That sun yeah. on, yeah. on the hot tamale box is, in, is too extreme. Yes. It started <laughs> off at the X Games, but my they started guy, doing too yeah. much hard drugs and got kicked off the tour. My guy, there's a level of extreme, and you went over the top. I'm I'm sorry, absolutely. Hot, I'm sorry, hot tamale. I did not like those oh, games. Who's an art at all? Uh, so yeah, welcome to the podcast, everybody. Uh, Oregon playing Washington at the moment. Uh, I'm Alex. He's King. He's Ski. Rebound. Uh, the Twitter oh, handle Oregon are, playing Washington. That should end well for the Ducks. Yeah, close game against Washington. No way that's going to go poorly. Might yeah, win by three at least. So uh, let's see. I'm going to give some handles. So handles, Twitter handles are on the picture. You can find those there. Uh, find us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash abrog87. We're doing the podcast live on there right now. If you want to join the chat, uh, looking at you, Kurt Coward. Um, get in the chat. It's a good time. Sorry, Kurt. Kurt made a comment about a correction that happened. He tried to correct us with something that was corrected live during the podcast last week by Booble in the chat. So I'm like, I will say in the last week, some of these like Facebook comments have been kind of rude between Kurt and uh, Big Chris. Yeah, just yeah. rude. Yeah, I know. They're very aggressive just, with us. They, he was he was so aggressive. They think they can talk to us a certain way, probably because Uh-oh. of how this podcast is. But you dipshits are gonna you don't besmirch know me. Bill Murray. What the fuck are you talking yeah. about, man? You don't know me. You can't talk to me like that. Rude. Rude. It was the holiday season too, and everyone was so rude to us. Not. I know. I'm pretty sure that was like Christmas Day. He was dialing like, us up. Literally, December has been the meanest. Was the meanest month online for me ever. Between the yeah. the Pac-12 championship game, C- Big Chris and Kurt just calling us dipshits and yeah. losers and nit- nincompoops or whatever he said. It just it was hurtful. Yeah. And I don't even bring up the Chiefs. Ooh. Ah, well, hey, they won their last game. Just saying. They did. Three seed. So, twitch.tv slash abrog87 if you want to get in the chat. Uh, join our Discord as well. Uh, sports Brewery in the Discord. Uh, it's a it's a fun place. Uh, also, you can find those streams if you miss them on YouTube. Uh, just search for Sports Brewery there, and I upload them there. So, you can if you miss them, you can watch them. I don't know why you'd be listening to this and then be like, oh, I really want to watch the podcast after listening to it. But, you know, whatever. Figured I'd put it out there. Movie this week. Uh, again, it's free for all month. That's not that's not a theme. Yes. So to say we went back to free for all. Uh, it's King's movie this week. It is Salt Burn. Uh, so the uh, it's on Prime came out. Uh, Twenty three. Uh, it's on Prime. I, salt Burn. I wish I, I wish I had salt thrown in my eyes. Instead of watching, I can I can take care of that for you if you want. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean you should have done that. You should have done that for the two and a half hours instead. I watch that <laughs> Your two and a half hour movie. Uh, it's on Prime. Go ahead and watch it. Listen to us talk about it. It has a twist. It's not a Shyamalan yeah. movie, but it's got a twist. So yeah, uh, let's see. Where should we start with sports? I mean, uh, Oregon played Liberty. We should probably talk about Liberty Bitty. Uh, it was a a very thorough 
ass whooping by Oregon. So a- again, it was one of those situations where the like what King says all the time: the other team is allowed to coach and play and try hard. They can try, and they yeah. al- they always do in the first quarter. Uh, and Liberty did, and then Oregon blew them away because Oregon. Yeah, Jamie much- Chadwell's paid millions of dollars yeah. to script drives in the first quarter, yes. and he did. He, yes. he scripted one. Yep, and and it worked. It and, did. Hey, they got a touchdown. Cool. Uh, but that is all Liberty did the entire game because uh, Oregon is much, much more talented than Liberty is. And f- frankly, those two teams should not have been playing each other at all, let alone in a Fiesta Bowl. Um, but some cool things happened in the game, I guess. You know, Bo Nix did end up setting the uh, record for completion percentage. Uh, so he's he broke Mac Jones' record for uh, completion percentage, NCAA record. Also set Oregon records for single season passing yards and touchdowns. Uh, Tez Johnson set the Oregon record for catches in a season. So that's cool, I guess. I think most of us going into this game were like, "Yeah, Oregon's going to win by a lot." Can Bo Nix break the completion percentage record? Who who's all going to come back after this game? That was pretty much it, right? I mean, I don't know. Yes, I mean, this one kind of hurt a little bit seeing Bucky run for like a buck twenty and looked better, much Looking better healthy. than he did. Yeah, much, yeah. much healthier. And then, kind of just because they had nothing to, you know, who cared about this game? They kind of opened the script up more. It would have been nice to see that, you know, because. What was it? Tez had like three or four catches in the Pac-12 championship game. I, I, I don't think it was that many. It was just like, yeah. where was this against Washington? Well, Washington's defense is better. I mean, oh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Relative <laughs> making the, att- the attempts for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, with the. I mean, you look at the numbers Tez finished with. It's like, how is it possible that none of that happened against Washington? Isn't that isn't that wild? Like, and, and, and he's, by, the, he's, the, he's the number two. Also, I mean, I was gonna, I was just gonna one, say, like, and, and the fact that the fact that they didn't have Franklin, I think, was a good thing because now, I mean, Bo's not. Am I here? Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm here. Good. I fro- everything else froze in my end. Okay, cool. So now we can see what uh, Tez and Holden and Ferguson uh, are going to look like next year. And Bryant uh, as well, by the way. But now we see what that's going to look like next year. Uh, and maybe they don't need Franklin as much as we think they do. They probably, I mean, it's nice to have an elite guy against good teams. Liberty's not a good team. But fucking A, they got a lot of talent. At wide receiver, and they're getting more too. Dickie's healthy now. They they're getting recruits in. They they might get that A and M kid. It's like shit. My my one of my favorite things about the the post mortem of the uh, Fiesta Bowl when you know after like oh whatever a good season blah 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 and you get to that point we start critiquing things is where people were like I don't know man Jurion Dickey had that catch and did you see the next play. Lined up. He didn't sell the run. He did not I try did, hard enough. I did see that. Cut I him. think he's good. He's he's transferring. Lazy bum. Not worth the scholarship. I mean, yeah, received... I, it was an eighty percent chance he just didn't know what the play was. Also, he got out there late. It was like the ball was getting snapped right when he got there. I don't know if he knew the play. No, I'm just. Yeah. I was just reading stuff. We're like, ah, oh, this is a bad sign. <laughs> You can't have that kind of behavior, guys. The guy, the guy played. Athletes, look, the guy played one quarter of football <laughs> this like whole athletes year. <laughs> don't try their hardest all the time. Like I, I gotta be honest with you. I hate to be the one to tell you that, but in baseball, when guys ground out in the top of the third for the third out, sometimes they just peel off to the dugout. <laughs> like it, it's cool in middle school to back up the the center fielder right. on a pop fly. Watch a big major league game. It really doesn't happen. Please stop with the fake hustle love. Every everybody wants their kid to be a try hard. Oh, uh, I don't. I but, hate but try no, hard. but nobody actually wants it. You know, oh, <laughs> like nobody I hate actually wants fake it. fake hustle is one of those things that yeah. just drives me insane. And I'm not saying that what Dickie did 
or didn't do, but he could have done was fake hustle per se. But there's so many times where there's just runs where the receivers just they just don't do anything. It's fine. Especially a, a, like a pitch to the opposite side of the, field. the opposite side. Like take, yeah. it, it's it's like uh, load management within the game. It's fine. Yeah. Now, like what George Pickens did for the Steelers two weeks ago. I think it, yeah, yeah, where, where he didn't block in the goal line on a run or a pat, whatever it was. OK, you can dissect that. A run to the opposite side of the field. What's he going to do? Only run a wheel route. <laughs> Only, doesn't matter. Only truly elite teams do all of that try hard blocking. Uh, that oh, would be, I hate it. I be, hate it. That would be the San Francisco 49ers. They do a lot of that. <laughs> but only because they are called out in the media when they don't. Like, but, but not against the Ravens. Not no. against the Ravens. Ain't nobody blocking the Ravens, anyways. So. So, what, so, what do you hate more? Do you hate the wide receiver blocking the guy 20 yards downfield? Or the guy that grounds out the third and runs through the bag. Oh, run through the I, bag. Run through I the bag. Hate. Easy. Run yeah. through the bag when there's no reason to. It's so pointless. It bo- that one, fake hustle in baseball really bothers me. Yeah. Because how often does real hustle have to happen in baseball? <laughs> you know? No, no. Well, now, like almost never. Never. <laughs> Maybe back when David Eckstein and Ozzy Smith were, you know, out there. But the way the game is played now in baseball, I don't need you sprinting to first and tear a quad just so you look good. Like, no one cares. Ozzie Peel Smith. off. Ozzie Smith was the biggest faker ever, man. He used to do all those backflips and stuff just to make people think he was trying hard. He wasn't oh, trying wizard. hard. The wizard. The wizard. The wizard. Get the out wizard. of here. Gimmick. He had like 218. Shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Gimmick. Bump. Gimmick. Couples fans are racist. Better. Much higher than 218. Oh, look up Ozzy Smith's career batting average. I'm looking up Ozzy. Bet you wasn't even 250. <laughs> I can let you smirk him hitting 218. Oh, you're a big Ozzy Smith fan all of a sudden. I know. I know. I love Ski just like. you making him Tony Gwynn and George Brett. <laughs> Or something. Ski, Actually, I think Brett's average wasn't that good. Ski no ended this a bit two, quick. Two sixty two hitter. Okay, he's a two sixty two hitter. He made the Hall of Fame by hitting singles. Take, take a guess at his. I mean, how many years he played? He played nineteen seasons. Compiler. How many home runs? Compiler. Did he hit in nineteen uh, seasons. Thirty eight. Close. Twenty eight. <laughs> The Hall of Super Average. Super uh, Average. Oh, uh, we well, should have seen him on that on that dribbler up the middle. Well, you I can mean, turn I mean, a double play like no one else. I mean, clearly you forget that monster 1985 season where he hits six bombs. I mean, oh. who forgets that? Monster. You want to hear a bold statement? He's juicing. So Ozzy Smith played most of his career in St. Louis, right? Correct. At, All, of know, All of his career. Bush no, Stadium 2. Padres, I think he started out with it, but then, yeah. I know, but you know, his prime was a cardinal. Yeah, and they played on turf, and he turned a lot of double plays and made cool plays because back in those days, turf was just cement painted green. If Ozzy Smith played on grass his entire career, not a Hall of Famer. I mean, clearly he's only, I mean, he won thirteen straight Gold Gloves. Oh so yeah, that yeah it's pretty easy when. Yeah. Everything is a, is a fucking dot to you because you're playing on cement and you just throw someone out at first. You don't have to make any plays. <laughs> Overrated. Every, what every time? Every time you throw somebody out at first, you got to do like two double black flips. And it, I, if yeah. you're gonna if you're gonna create yourself a Hall of Famer, I guess that's how you do it, right? Give me Willie McGee over Ozzy well, Smith every day of the week. You could be Jim Edmonds and have to put yourself in bad position to have to die for every ball. That's true. It's true. He did. He, he intentionally got bad jumps. Yep. Yep. Or Cespedes. Remember Cespedes? This is some good Fiesta Bowl Purp- talk, guys. Yeah. Purposely tank brown balls so we could throw guys out. You love it. Yeah. Same Absolutely. with Ichiro. And Ichiro. And Ichiro, wouldn't steal, Ichiro wouldn't steal bases because nope. it hurt his body. Just yep. wanted to hit singles. 
just hit lead off <laughs> singles. Whoa. What a dumb, what a dumb sport. What a dumb time. <laughs> All losers. Man, Ichiro, I, you're a loser. I was with you until you started going after Ichiro, man. Our oh, podcast uh, overrated. Is- Brett Boone was the better player of the year. Ichiro won the MVP by far. Podcast is going to get blown yeah. up here real soon. 2001 MVP should have been Brett Boone. I mean, we gave him, we gave it to oh, enough juicers. Who cares? Right. I mean, he's one of the golden child of juicing. Him and Brady Anderson, two that just, I think their highest in the season was like 20. Then they dropped like 55. Some bullshit. Booble says Jeff Blauser is better than Ozzy Smith. Easy. Yeah. Not even a question. I mean, Raphael, Raphael, Raphael Belliard, I think he might have hit like five career bombs. <laughs> Raffy Belliard. <laughs> I love you dropping Raffy Belliard stats off the top of your head, too. That's great. Yeah, good. I remember uh, he, had, he, had, he had the longest run in between home runs. It was like seven years. Something just absurd. Good. Uh, you're right, Ken. Good Fiesta Ball talk. We're, we're doing yeah, good. it is. So Oregon did win the we're Fiesta. We're talking Matt Berryhill. <laughs> Breaking his ankle <laughs> for the Braves. The Bravos. <laughs> Oregon did win the Fiesta Ball which is at least a cool trophy. So It is a very cool trophy. Yeah. So or- Oregon gets a cool trophy out of it and that's what we're all about here. Rings, trophies, give me all of them. Yep. CBI banners, I mean. Yeah, yeah banners. And we'll I, like and we kind of talked about this in the lead up to it, but what a just the draw like of it's one thing if you're like like if Wazoo played in the field and I'm not trying to take a shot at Wazoo. Oregon State Cal, Arizona State. If they played in this fiesta, they had the exact same season as Oregon played in this fiesta bowl against Liberty, they'd be jacked. They'd have fans. There'd be juice. It just was such a letdown, not only because we all think Oregon could have won a game in the CFP, maybe two. Okay, they, but but they lost, so they didn't. But it was because they had to play Liberty. They were just the team that got stuck with the group of five. And if they and there was a controversy, SMU and Liberty, we wouldn't give a shit about SMU either. Like it was just black from the very beginning. And I was hoping that Liberty would be so excited that they would send thirty thousand fans. You know, like small. Some of the smaller schools can do when they get in these games, but they didn't either. And it was just started at 10 in the morning. We knew Oregon was going to win like 50 to 10. It just was what it was. You turn it on. There's 45,000 people in a 62,000 seat stadium. It was just barf. And I, and I feel bad. Like I'm, I think it's cool that a lot of the players opted in and played and seemed the, and the ones that opted out, went to the game, you know, blah, blah, blah. Good for them. But it was just, I, I, I was watching it and just didn't care. Just didn't I mean, care. Did, uh, do you think Georgia fans are in the same situation as us? Oh, having to play Florida State and just absolutely nuke them? I mean, that, that was less of a game than the Ducks game was. Yeah. yeah it was just... Did you say SMU was up for the Fiesta Bowl? With yes, them? it was. It was. Uh, everyone thought SM, like the pundits thought SMU should have gotten the spot, but they gave it to Liberty because they were undefeated. Is basically what they said. S- they, SMU they, they lost to they, Boston College, but that was the funny thing is they rewarded Liberty for being undefeated, and they told FSU, "Ah, it doesn't matter. Okay. They're trying to be <laughs> like slightly higher stakes, you know, CFP versus New Year's Six. Right. But the rationale was just funny. So, total wins next year for FSU with DJU at the helm. 9.5 over under? Uh, yeah, I don't know their schedule, but... I mean, it's the ACC, so it's it's not that good. No, it's not. Yeah, they're guaranteed at least nine, right? Probably. Oh, if, if, their de- if their defense comes back, their defense will win them half the games just right off the bat. He doesn't have to do too much, I guess is the point. I'm glad you mentioned the crowd, by the way, because did you notice the broadcast? Like during Liberty's first drive, it was excessively loud. Like, like, yes. like, like the no, every time they made, like when they got a first down, 
It was the loudest I've ever heard a football game before. And then it sort of like evened out as the game went on. So like remember during remember during COVID when they would have those like Premier League games with the fake crowd noise being pumped through? Yeah. It was the bad. weirdest thing ever. And that's what it felt like in the Fiesta Bowl. I was like, what is going on? This is I'm I'm not gonna watch this game if like I'm gonna mute it and turn on like Jerry Allen or something if if it's gonna be like this. And luckily they like evened it out, but it was fucking bizarre. It- yeah, I'm glad, I, I don't I'm, glad remember I, those. I'm glad I'm not the only one who noticed that. It was weird. I don't remember those EPL games where they pumped in the crowd noise. They were. It was really bad. Yeah, they. It tried, was because they, they would do the chants and. Did they did it, they mix in enough racism to make it real? Or? They well, the announcers did throw banana peels at the black players. Oh, did they? Well, are, so. they did that. So try to try to keep it how it was before the pandemic. Yes, least, and know. after. Wait, but never change, yeah. never change, England. You yeah. sucky country. My my the reading worst. glasses are over there. I was about to well actually you because because that's when they did the uh, when they all took a knee to stand against racism. <laughs> they, yeah, they, they made sure to start. I, worked out, right? They made sure to start that with no fans in the stands. By the way, <laughs> oh, they would have gotten murdered on the pitch, man. Come on. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a business decision. Not bad. Uh, let's see. Any other any other takes on the Fiesta Bowl? Uh, so ha- no. so so curtain calls no. for curtain calls for Bo. Curtain call for Bucky, which might mean Bucky is indeed actually going to try to go to the NFL draft. So you know he should and just he's, he's we'll see where he grades out. It, as, it's like. another deal where he's not going to get graded out higher next year. And That's my thing. So, like, you know, whatever. I, I saw, I read one of those, like, insider ESPN articles where the dude graded Bucky as, like, a third-round pick, which is seems high, but he's also productive, and people can't tackle him. So, I don't know. Yeah, don't but know. then you get to the, you know, the new... He can catch the ball. He can. Yeah. That's his but you, get, but you get to the new normal now to where he might make more next year in NIL than he could his entire NFL career. If he, I mean, he could obviously, you know, become, you know, I could see him maybe as a third down back somewhere or mm-hmm. injury puts him as a backup, but I don't see him, you know, getting that. I mean, there's, there's no real big paydays for running backs anyway, right now. He's not going to make a ton over his career. No, but I mean, if he tears an ACL next year. Yeah, at least he know. banks a mill or whatever his and I know would be. Maybe. Yeah, go play in the CFL and make you know two hundred k. I I think running backs, the the days of them playing four years, if they're, you know, all conference level or just yeah. they're just gone. Yep, and and from Oregon's perspective, they have Whittington coming back. They got like they got a they're they're good at running back next year too. So it's like it's not like he's leaving the cupboard empty or anything with the Ducks either. So can yeah. I give a hot running back take? Go for it. James should start over Whittington. Yes. As much shit as we talked about Jordan James, like last year, last, last year. year. Yeah. And, and again, it, and it was, it wasn't knocks on James. It was that he just had every meaningful touch that just didn't make inside sense. the five or yeah, on it, fourth it, and it, one. Exactly. It just, <laughs> just he, he was, he was fine. He was a fine running back last year. It was just, why you use your workhorse that got you there in those important times? He fucking Not averaged Jim. like nine yards a carry this year. <laughs> I, he was very good. He's very good. The offensive line was also very good, to be fair. But yeah, yeah. No, Oregon's Oregon's kind of set on offense next year. I think we talked about it last week too. Like or, Oregon's gonna be really good on offense next I mean, year. Well, I, mean, I, I mean, sent you that. Like Jack, I sent you that one. Powers, you know, so Powers Johnson didn't play in the bowl game. His replacement was like a freshman, and yeah, Poncho. He, he played really good too. Poncho, yeah, Poncho. You wouldn't know it if you listened to James Crepia do the Fiesta Bowl recap, though. Oh, why would anybody listen to James Crepia say anything yeah, lot, at all ever? <laughs> a lot of floaters, a lot of floaters, a lot of knuckleballs. I'm not saying he had to throw everything as a fastball, but a lot of balls that uh, won't work in the Big Ten. Just, just let you know, big problem heading into the spring. It's so weird listening to him when he does his stuff with Tannen, because uh, because he, awesome. he he will not let Tannen talk. <laughs> he will. He talks over him. Oh my god! All every single time. I almost listen to it now. 
just to hear him drown him. And, and it's not a knock against Tannen. It's no, not no, what no. I'm trying to do. It's just so funny to hear Tannen be like, uh, this was a couple of weeks ago. And he's like, oh, yeah, Jackson Powers Johnson won the Remington Award, or whatever the hell award he won for the best. Remington, in the yeah. yeah. And he's like, oh, you know, he, he barely played, you know, as a freshman and rotated a lot last year. And as a junior, he won it. Who could have seen that coming? And Kreppy just crushed him for like seven straight minutes. I saw that coming. Everyone should have seen that coming. How did you not see you that not? coming? How he was he didn't fucking play center until this year, you idiot. <laughs> and I just, I was like, oh, I love how insufferable this guy is. I think he has good football opinions, but God, he's insufferable. And and it, it's weird hearing him with another person, too, because he, he literally talks as if he's alone. Like he's having a conversation with himself and like the yeah, other like, person isn't there. So so Tana will like try to jump in and ask a question and he'll just be like, "Hey, and uh by the way, blah blah blah." It's like, "Holy shit." I can't, I can't imagine sitting in that studio watching that happen. Like just just I you know, Steve like, su- Steve's super professional and stuff, but he I just seeing the frustration like would if, be If you were work, if you were working the board still, would you just mute Crepia's mic at least to <laughs> no, no. give Tana at least a second to get in there? <laughs> Oh, is that what? That's producer work right there, cutting oh, people off. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd have to have like some off mic discussions. <laughs> hey guys, just so you know, this is this doesn't sound good. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, okay, so nothing else with the Fiesta Bowl. Nothing else with Duck Football, I guess. I mean, we do have we did have some official announcements of guys coming back, so. Tez and Holden said they're coming back. Uh, Gary Bryant Jr. is joining them, obviously. Just so that's the receiver core with the with the new guys too. Uh, Bassa said he's coming back, uh, and Taishim Johnson said he's coming back. So, and we're waiting on Birch at the moment. I think that's the other big one. Ferguson, Birch and Ferguson. That sounds like Ferguson's not coming back. Really, he's not I a school don't. guy. And I, he's got he's got NFL tight end body. Yeah, yeah. It just sounds like he's a guy who's like, I've been here three years. I don't like school, which is that's not. I'm not. This is not me doing a knock. And I think he has a fiance or something. I read, and they're just they're just they're okay with just moving on and trying the next step in life, doing the work. Yeah, but that's just you know that's just recruiting board stuff. So I could be a thousand percent wrong. Okay. I mean, they got the Sadiq guy who scored a touchdown in the bowl game who's, like, very athletic and good. Um, they've had good recruiting at tight end, too, last few years, so. Yeah, I mean, I don't think, Herbert. yeah. I can't say Sadiq is better than Ferguson next year, but I, I don't think the drop-off will be. Yeah, I mean, Herbert, too, right? Herbert wasn't a senior, was he? No, he's coming back. Oh, okay, yeah. He's definitely coming back. He's, yeah. No, he's I, I thought he was, drive. I literally thought he was graduating. But, yeah, okay. Yeah, again, Oregon, fine on offense. And, you know, like, they've been recruiting like crazy on defense, too, so. Which doesn't matter, according to Aaron Fenders. Does not matter. Uh, Let's see. Did you see that there's a Steamboat Willie movie? We did. did. We could save that for the movie podcast if we want to, but I figured everybody would want to hear about it. So it, they're saying it's Mickey Mouse coming out of public domain, uh, but it's actually Steamboat Willie. It's not actually Mickey Mouse. So yeah, that's technically it's not Mickey Mouse, even though it is Mickey Mouse, yeah. but it's not. Yeah. So it's good. So it's it's gonna look like it's gonna look like Mickey Mouse, like Winnie the Pooh looked like Winnie the Pooh like in the <laughs> Winnie the Pooh movie. Yeah. <laughs> Pooh, blood and honey. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. You don't want Can't poo. wait for the sequel. Don't want blood or honey and poo. But let me just, yeah. <laughs> All right, that's it. I, I thought I thought you want to talk about that. Apparently, you did. No. <laughs> the director of it directed a live action Grinch movie and a live action Powerpuff Girls movie. So that's what we can look forward wait. to with Steamboat Willie. He directed the Grinch movie, the one with Jim Carrey. Nope. Uh, no. It's it's no. called. Oh, no. It's called. Oh. It's called the Mean One. Which uh, check out the cover of that one. It's yeah. It is. It's not the Jim Carrey one. I think that was Ron Howard. 
<laughs> I mean, yeah. that's why I was like, oh man, they got a good director in here. It's got to be gold, right? Yeah, it's called The Mean One. Look it up. You will be disappointed. <laughs> uh, okay, so shall we get, I mean, we could talk about <laughs> this, this. Go ahead. Tagline for it, slashing through the snow. There you go. There you go. That's what we can look forward to is the Steamboat Willie movie. Uh, should we talk about the semifinals at all? No. No. Okay. No. We all just feeling bad because Washington. Yeah. Cool. At least Oregon beat Washington on the hard court tonight. They did. Yeah. They did. By the way, uh, update: Oregon won seventy six seventy four. So eat shit, Washington. We yeah. own you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Even though I think you swept them in basketball last year too, which is way weirder than anything you did in football. <laughs> Eat shit, Frank Kepnong, you traitor. You loser. Fucking traitor. Traitor. I mean that. I'm spelling that with a D, you traitor. The D and traitor. Sands for ducks own you, Frank. <laughs> Even though you're one and two again, or you're two and one against them, whatever. We take victories where we can get them now, as we're a sad, pathetic have, fan base. Have to take. Yeah. 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 Wins where you can get them. Uh, uh, can I just say, so who, someone in the discord sent a link of Brett McMurphy sending in his final AP vote, Sure, you know, before the final, he's going to have Washington or Michigan, number one, number two, Water. watch Texas all year or even on Monday. And was like, yeah, they're the third best team in the country. I don't know, but the hype was there all season as like they were the third best team. I didn't see it. Well, I mean, I know they beat, you know, they beat Alabama by 10 in Tuscaloosa in September. That's not, you cannot discount that. But man, the Big 12 stunk. Big 12 was bad. Like beating Oklahoma State by 30 or whatever it was in the Big 12 championship game. Not like really not impressive. And the thing is, is if Georgia had just beaten Alabama Texas is not getting into the playoff yeah. but because Alabama won the SEC in an upset. They had to put Texas in. They did not. I, I think Texas jumped from seven to three in the final, like the final poll to like the official CF people, CF people. They're much closer to the seventh best team in the country than the third best team. Like, I yeah, don't I think quite- Oregon's beating Georgia. I think they could beat Alabama. I think they could beat Michigan. I think I would feel very confident on a neutral field playing Texas. I don't think Quinn Ewers is that good. No, no. I mean, I after after every, all the game we've seen so far, Georgia's clearly the third best team. It might be the, <laughs> to be favored. They, 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 sure. they, they could easily beat Michigan or Washington with yeah. ease. Yeah, Natsian yeah. mentions that uh, Oregon's quarterback beat Texas this year. Dylan it's Gabriel. true. It's true. Yep. So the Horn Killer. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the 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 Rose Bowl was kind of ugly. Which okay, that's just kind of how Michigan wants to play. Just so how I'm Michigan not, plays. That's all. I'm just not really going to dock them on that. And I the Sugar Bowl was, you know, it was fun. Penix threw a lot of dimes. Uh, Texas, Lord knows why they only ran the ball like 18 times while they were averaging like eight yards, nine yards a carry. And it's not like they busted a 90 yarder to skew those numbers. It was just, <laughs> they kept getting nine yards a carry. Uh, yeah. they're, they're two running backs. Both had nine rushes each in 64 yards and 59 yards. Yeah. It was just, it was a bizarre. I don't know. It was, it was weird. And, and Christ, Quinn, you were, this is, this is what pisses me off about Washington this year is they're just so, God, they just all the breaks go their way. That last throw by yours, yeah. he, he like basically punted it in the air. Where if, if that's you dub doing it, it's a dart back shoulder and it's an easy touchdown. Like he just completely misread the throw he should make. Where he threw it and went, and just from where I was sitting, then he throws it and the, the camera pans and you're like, that's an opportunity. Holy sh- Oh, yeah. and then you just see the ball keep going up and up like it's a rainbow. And like, that's no, like, you kind of missed your window there, bud. Even before it was, 
you know, the last 25% of the way there, you just knew it wasn't going to happen. And the guy shows a dart to the back, to the pylon. Texas wins. And that, and, um, easy, Washington easy, is just easily defended. Really yeah. easy play. Oh yeah. The that Washington guy, guy swatted, jumped guy up. Swatted up midair like Kevin Garnett. Blocked he shots. did. Yes, he did. Took yeah. Fucking fifth row. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's just it's so frustrating. So, and, who, do you guys, who do you guys think wins on Monday? I think I think Washington. I mean, we'll we're gonna have picks later, right? We're gonna, but we're gonna. Have I mean, there's though. no reason. We might as well just. Get yeah, no, now. you're right. But we should do it anyways. Just yeah. go through the motions. But I think I think Washington, man. Like I, I don't know why Washington runs any play other than a fade to Odunze. Like just run it every play. Like Penix Penix's fade is the most beautiful throw I've ever seen. I think. Like, like the the rainbow, like his placement of it is perfect every time. It's it's fucking maddening. I mean, we know this is Oregon people because we saw them utilize it against Oregon twice this year. The whole fucking game, man. Like that dude cannot throw a bad deep ball. It's unbelievable. And Odunze is so savvy at making corners go directions that they don't want to go, and then catching a ball. Like, no, who stops that? Nobody, well, nobody can stop. Even, him. even, even if it's not an absolute dime by Penix, so Dunze will go get it. That's or, what makes him an elite level. Yeah, man. Like they're so yeah. good. They are so good at wide receiver. It's, it's. I mean, it's, it's why you have got you know like Randy Moss in his prime. Just put it in his vicinity, and he's coming down with it. I think, I think if Michigan's going to have a chance, it's going to have to be up front because we've seen people beat up Penix this year. And Michigan's really good up front. And so if they can get pressure and beat him up and make him go, you know, put his head in that hood thing again, like they they can beat Washington, but man, like but, the offense, but we saw the offense no, is really, we, really impressive. But we saw that in the first game, you know, the Ducks got a good amount of pressure on Penix. It had him flustered. But then to Boer and the OC, they changed it up and they did a lot of quicker throws and running the ball more. I wouldn't be surprised if he changes it up again for this Michigan team. And I mean, this game, it's like you said, Michigan just wants to play in the mud and make the game ugly. UW every game seems to be close and the bounces go their way. It's going to be a close game. So UW with four and a half points is insane not to take. I, I think the, I think the hard thing is not knowing how healthy Dylan Johnson will be. Because, like, the curveball that Washington can do is they don't do it every game, but they did it against Oregon in the Pac-12 championship game, and they did it against Texas, and they've done it a couple of other times. Like, who cares against USC? Whatever. Where once or twice a game, they will have that 11-play drive where they run the ball, seven of them, and it just eats up eight and a half minutes. And it's totally out of character. It's a total curveball, but they will eat up half a quarter plus and score a touchdown on a fade pass at the end or, you know, get two yard run sometimes with Dylan Johnson. But I do think it kind of hinges on him a little bit. And I know he's not going to be 100 percent healthy. No kidding. But if he's ineffective, I think Michigan will. But at this point, I'm just done doubting Washington. I just, I feel like they're char- all year. You can make the argument that Michigan has been the best team in the nation. You know, they've been number one forever, you know, whatever. Washington is just, they just feel charmed and they're not charmed as in like a, you know, a, like, like last year, Oregon state was a charm team. They weren't an elite team. They just got all the turnovers. They made the timely plays, blah, blah, blah. But Washington has elite playmakers, you know, and it's just it's frustrating as fuck. And thank God they're like 11 or 12 sixth year players are finally fucking graduate uh, pharma pharmacies, you know, companies, uh, right wing grifters and Washington football. No one has benefited more from COVID. The- it's fucking insane. They meant like Devin Culp made like an eight yard catch. And like, oh yeah, he's the uh, 13th six year player who plays on the roster. I mean, people make fun of people make fun of Bo Nix for being old. 
they have like 11 or 12 players who were playing college football while Bo Nix was still in high school. It's too old. It's too old. Like, like, fucking, fucking my, these guys are all older than uh, just, just, Trey Young. <laughs> it's just bizarre how old some of these guys are. I am not going And that's sour grapes completely, like from my my aspect. But some percent. of these guys are like like they're just like ZTF. He looks old. I think he's overrated as fuck, but he's 26 years old. That is a massive advantage. And he has 10 more of those guys on his team. And one of them plays the most important position in the sport. I'm not gonna miss any of those guys. If if I never see Odunze again i will be a happy man i'm i'm over watching him make make those ridiculous fucking catches and be unstoppable i'm done i'm done unless he gets drafted by the 49ers then that'll be okay do you think do you think he'd reach the end of the first round probably not huh he's probably like a well you might as well take a dunes eh, if you're gonna let like iu walk he's probably like a seven to Fifteen draft pick, I would think. I, but Ayuk's gonna look real nice in Kansas City red here next yeah. year. <laughs> Kansas City's gonna pay a wide receiver. All right, cool. They're gonna, they're gonna. Well, they're gonna have. They are finding out now. You're gonna have to. As if KC's not gonna be the ones that drafting Odunze. They ain't gonna, they ain't okay. gonna pay a free agent wide receiver. They would have done that with Tyreek. Because yeah, because you know they they've been hitting on all their wide receiver draft picks here. It's here. WCP says Odunze would look oh. good in KC. So let's do oh. our let's do our lines. Okay. I mean, we're, we already picked the we already we basically lost, picked the Natty, but we lost King for a second there. So oh, okay. right now, so. All right. Did Go the, talk about your Niners. Why he's fiddling around? Talk about my Niners. What do you want me to talk about? I don't know. They're sitting everyone. They're gonna get the rust. And they're yeah, gonna you, lose you on the first round. Right? You give me the topic because there's so many things that I could talk about. I mean, how about like there's 13 Pro Bowl starters or something for them? It's can you hear us now, King? Yes. Okay, cool. About, I, I was about to talk about the I, I was about to fill time and talk about the 49ers, but I don't necessarily want to do that. So let's let's do lines. How about that? Well, how about Sam Darnold's going to light it up on Sunday, and they're going to be like, should Brock Purdy be starting over Sam Darnold? I, I mean, for, should he? I forget Is who it, Darnold's playing against. It's Carson like, Wentz, I think. Wentz, that was it. Yeah, yeah. it's Wentz. Yeah. Darnold versus Wentz on Sunday. What fucking team is Wentz on? The Rams. The Rams. Yeah, he's a he's backup. Win. Yeah. I think they I think they signed him three weeks ago, a month ago, I think. I don't think he's been to that. Long. So mark, mark my words. Carson Wentz owns the 49ers. Absolutely owns them. Beat beat them with the Eagles, beat them with the Colts, I think, right? Ski? Yeah, beat, oh, yeah. Yeah, beat them as the starter of both of those teams. This is going to be number three. You you watch. Nin, Niners, <laughs> Niners aren't playing anybody. Carson Wentz about to go 3-0 and against them <laughs> with three different teams. Yeah, all right, let's do lines, huh? Let's. I mean, where are you lines, lines, lines everywhere, lines. lines. We're going through the motions because it's already set. Ski and I chased last week, and it was really bad because we were chasing, going against six thought lines. Yeah, we're we're still alive, King, because I don't know if you know, but the national championship game is worth 17 points. So <laughs> I, I'm alive. Here. <laughs> no, it was, yeah. Double your money. Double your money. Oh. Split the cards. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. It, chasing did not equal goodness for me and King. Sure did not. And you were seven to three. We were both two and eight. It's. A bloodbath. I even hit point. my star pick. Yeah, it was it was a beautiful thing. Yeah. So, so if you want to so, pick, so what it's... what are what are the standings right now? Like total. You're standings. in first. Yeah, like oh, the, the overall first. score or whatever. You have 84 points. King is in second with 73 points. I am in third with 68 points. Ooh, that's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot to not that it much. Is. Yeah. Hmm. All, All right. right. And this game, and that's state, it's four and a half. I said it earlier. So Washington, Michigan's a four-and-a-half favorite? Okay. Four-and-a-half favorite. Washington for me. Star pick. <laughs> Michigan, star pick. <laughs> Go Big Blue. Michigan's 17 star pick. <laughs> oh, oh, no! Oh. He, say that again. How many star picks? 17! <laughs> I, I actually think UW covers. But 
I think they might win. I, there's a good chance they win the game, but I think they at least cover here. But I am shocked to, like I said, Michigan just wants to fucking muck up games. This total's at like 55. I know UW's had a good offense, but they're going to want to just run the ball with Corum and kill clock. And That sounds right, though, because isn't that what they were against Alabama? I mean, it's pretty. It was around 55, wasn't it? Yeah, well, somewhere around there, yeah. And Washington's but. got a lot better offense. I It might be low, if you ask me. I don't know. McCarthy's a pile, so who knows? He stinks. He does stink. He stinks. He, like, I, I really don't understand the the logic of people saying he's going to be a solid, like, first-round NFL draft pick. I, I don't see it at all. It's really, really weird to me. But Hey, uh, speaking of stinks... Do you remember what my fantasy football name was? I don't. Were you Sweet Meteor of Death? No, I was This Team Stinks. This Team Stinks. Hey, Alex, what did George Seifert say about the final week of uh, fantasy football playoffs? You can't win it, but you sure can lose it? Exactly. Yeah. And I'm sorry. We, we, we had some Tuesday weeks. We had the holidays. Hey, hey. For about five weeks, I completely... I completely flubbed it. So I want to I want to congratulate Mahomes alone for beating Kappa Dubba Java. Koopa Dubba Java Kappa Kappa 142.91 to 138.66 to win the fantasy football national championship. Well, Super Bowl. TSB whatever you call fantasy it. champion. The TSB, yeah. I mean yeah. I, I apologize. I, I was bad the last five or six weeks. Then by bad I mean Always. I just didn't do it. Yeah. I didn't care, but at least one Mahomes got a W. Going to get a W here in the playoffs. Oh, come on, get our Colts fan, get out of here! Hey, going to make the playoffs here if we win. We'll make uh, the playoffs. Yeah, make so, the playoffs. Speaking of playoffs, you um, guys throw a celebration and eat the shrimp and your clam sauce or whatever in Indianapolis over that. My <laughs> Chiefs make the playoffs and we <laughs> commit suicide because it's such a down yeah. year. <laughs> yeah, speaking of playoffs, like in the fantasy playoffs. That is when Purdy had his like four interception game. Like that's when the Niners play the Ravens, and then like McCaffrey got hurt in the other one afterwards or something. So it was just a. Uh, I have McCaffrey and Purdy on my TSB team, so it was. Oh, is WCP Mahomes alone? Must be. I think so. Go to hell. <laughs> he traded me. He traded me Dante Dowdell. That guy stunk. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was his name. He says maybe no. that's the Oregon transfer. WCP says no. That's not no. Yeah, we got a lot of Mahomes people in this league. What's going Apparently on? Apparently so. Like as if no one knows, I'll just claim that I'm Mahomes. I'm the champion. Yeah, just call it yourself. Eat, sh- eat shit, losers. <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. Uh, all right, let's do list. <laughs> so our list sure. this. Our list this week um, comes from Chef Chef Duck in the Discord. Again, Sports Brewery in the Discord. If 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 you if you're so inclined, um, show your face, Kurt. You coward. You coward. Get in the chat while you're at it. Uh, like and subscribe. Punch the bell. Uh, top three ways to cope when UW wins the national championship game because that is going to be a bummer. I mean, for you guys oh. more than me, I, I'm not really on Twitter, um, but UW fans are going to be insufferable, and they're going to be for a long time. And Trust they, me, it doesn't take winning a national title for them to be insufferable. I know. So think of the level it's going to be when they win the Natty this week. In 2021, they were 4-8, and eight, and their whole thing was, oh, you only beat Washington by how much? Oh, 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 losers. They lost to Montana a couple of years ago. Yeah, that was the same year they lost to Montana. Yeah, man, yeah. like they, they've had a winless season, and now they're going to win a national championship, and all that stuff just goes away. It's a, it's a, it's here's a, a here's an update you've missed, King. Apparently, I I almost forgot that we did like a bowl pick'em league uh, as well. Oh yeah. Do you, do you know who won that? No. Some some team with a shitty name, uh, Roma Doomsday is burning. <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah. God, you actually it. you actually won that, King. You won the bowl. You won the pick'em. So, did I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's I forgot a, about that. I forgot to check. Yeah. That's a great. 
by the way. Okay, I'm going to sit- try it a third it's time. Bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's okay, not bad. did I you hear me you. any of those times I said that? We heard all, Every single all time. time. Oh, okay, weird. Yep, all yeah. three of them. Everything froze on my end. Whatever, who cares? Um, all right, let's so let's do our list. Things to do when uh, th- ways to cope when Washington wins an Addy. Somebody else start. Well, I'll I'll start because it's you know tried and true method for generations, and that's drinking alcohol. But not just any alcohol. I think you got to drink like you're gonna need like grain alcohol. You need like you're gonna really need to numb it with something. Gotta get dirty. Through. Gotta get yeah. nasty. I like it. Jet just jet fuel in you. <laughs> Why don't I get some absinthe? That's like green or something, isn't it? Isn't that green? Yeah. So it is green. Drink, drink some absinthe. How about that? All right. I'm going to do my number three is going to be like an actual practical one for all of you. Delete social media. I mean, I feel like mine was pretty practical as well, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, what were you trying to say? I was. You're right. I just kind of brushed that aside because it okay, wasn't. Right. You really sideswiped in there, you I'm asshole. Really what is that about? So, finally, <laughs> let's get to a good one. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, I'll run in the street and kick a baby in the face. That's how you cope. It was like, jeez. I mean, that might feel good too. Really took him out there. That was so rude. Ski, that, ski, that was my number one, dude. Come on. I was your number one. I mean, Kicking geez, a baby in what? the face. <laughs> New year, rude you. It's just <laughs> brutal. Go fuck yourself, Ski. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <what's... laughs> my number three way to cope after Washington wins the national championship. Copenhagen Black. Or cope. Bourbon. Cope. Some bourbon. bourbon. I get it. Yeah. I get it. It's cope. I get it. What's your two ski? Oh wait, no, uh, my, no, no, sorry, my, sorry, 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 sorry. Three's in the chat. My bad. My bad. Uh, Booble says, uh, "Listen to Jagged Little Pill on repeat." Uh, <laughs> Why? You out of now? Jesus, that's fucking depressing. WCP says, uh, "Drink 750 milliliters of something 80 proof." <laughs> You are going to die. Uh, Nuttian says, going to do shout while crying like a vil- the Villanova flute girl. <laughs> yeah, it's good. You know that gif of the, the, the little black kid who's doing the sad, like, Fortnite dance in the kitchen? He's oh, crying. Okay. He's doing... That's, that, that was shout in the background is basically what I'm picturing. Yeah. yeah. I, I I picture that as well. Yeah. yeah. Looks about right. All right, Ski. All right, my number two, uh, Boo kind of stole it. Mine was to pump up a bunch of fucking emo music and just sit in darkness. Because tonight will be the night that I forget college football. You guys, your solutions are just to, like, sit in your depression. <laughs> Like just be your you, best, live in it. That's what you do. Don't well, do. Or you do. Is that coping? <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I guess. Like acceptance. Or are we talking about like stages what, of? What stage, denial? what stage of grief are we in? Yeah, exactly. We're in acceptance. Man, we're just jumping ahead, jumping ahead. But that's fine. I I like that for you. Uh, let's see. My number two. Well, yeah, I was. I was. I was wondering which 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 shoulder I was gonna go with, like the angel on the shoulder, the demon on the shoulder. I'm gonna go the the demon, and I'm gonna do hard drugs, lots and lots, lots and lots of hard drugs. I mean, name your name your hard drug of choice. Do some crocodile. <laughs> crocodile. <laughs> wow! What, what a shout from 2013. <laughs> Seriously, that's Jeez. amazing. I wonder, if that, I wonder if that still even exists. No, no. God. Uh, the pictures circulating online of people who had done that. Jesus. Woof. That's nasty stuff. All right. How about you, King? My number two is pretty boring. Two 10 milligram edibles of marijuana. And Lana Del Rey in the background. So like every night for you? <laughs> oh, no, I don't listen to Lana Del Rey. Christ. Wouldn't be alive if I did. Shit's does pressing as hell. Do you, do you do with like a maybe a bottle of port with that? What's a 
like nice dessert wine. Does that go with? No, you no, know, I'm too old. To, I'm too old to cross to cross breed at this you can't, point. Can't cross. No. But it made me sound okay. like an uncle at Thanksgiving. <laughs> <I> cross breeders. <laughs> <laughs> Dessert, wine, edibles, and Lana Del Rey. That's an easy oh, Newsmax. <laughs> well, I, I don't think I didn't think a Zinfandel was you know appropriate for the edibles. So yeah. just sit and watch some CNBC. <laughs> <laughs> All right, turn on uh, Fox News. There's the best way to cope. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, two's from the chat. Booble says, "Watch the Steve Bartman game again." <laughs> Yeah, Cubs fan. De- WCP says drink 750 milliliters of something 100 proof. <laughs> Lincoln City says uh, watch Blazers versus Knicks on Root Plus and Celtics. <laughs> 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 I thought he was going to watch Blazers Lakers in t- 1999 no. or 2000. That's what <laughs> Nixon on Root Plus. That's a way worse, sir. That is, that is way worse. Watching Jalen Brunson cook the city of Portland. Unacceptable. Uh, Josh Hart revenge game. Nutian says, uh, order a Pac-12 pride shirt. I don't get it. I, I don't I don't I don't understand. Back that. he's got a back you back the pack. Back the pack. Right. Back oh the pack. I thought he meant like a like a gay pride shirt. I was like, oh, what do you have against no, the gays? Oh, what, 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 Jeez. Jeez, man. John Kinzano did say Oregon fans should be rooting for Washington because of Northwest Pride. Get yeah. that John Kinzano yeah. would say that. No. Get fucked, my dude. He knew yes. what he was he knew what he was doing when he said that. Uh, all, all right, right so um, you're number one. Go ahead. Yeah, my number one way to cope if UW wins the national championship, it, it's simple. Just stick your head in the oven. I mean, <laughs> that's... I, I do love those PSAs every winter. I mean, <laughs> <Remember> people, <laughs> if it's cold out, don't turn your oven on broil and leave the <laughs> oven open. <laughs> Children might crawl in. Well, do that if UW wins. Just turn it on high. See what happens. Who cares? Seems legit to me. Uh, my number one is belly flop into the Amazon slough and just sort of stay there for a while. Might as well. I mean, breathe, you might as, just breathe it in. You might as well yeah. just suffer and maybe you'll die. And, and that might be okay, too. Well, you can probably get your hard drugs at the same time with all the needles <laughs> probably in there. And... That's a good point. It's a good point. I do all three of my lists at once. Yeah, <laughs> and my phone because my phone breaks and my social media is no yeah. longer active. Yeah, there you go. All right, how about you? My number one thing to do when Washington wins the national title to cope: log on to Twitter and tell Aaron Fentress he's a fucking loser from Portland who never went to North Carolina and isn't a Bulls fan, and stop taking a victory lap because Mark Helfrich got fired because Mark Helfrich has never really been rehired because he was a bad coach, and we hate you, Aaron Fentress, and you suck, and we're glad you're not on the beat anymore. Yeah, I support that. Well, I mean, didn't. Didn't help for, wasn't he a USFL coach? No, I don't think you're gonna no, like Mike I, Riley. <laughs> uh, let's see. Number one's from the chat. Nettian says, donate to the Division Street NIL so we can buy better players. That's a good one, actually. That's, I like that one. Uh, WCP says, smoke a few grams of dabs plus my number two or number three. <laughs> I'll do dabs. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I mean, but it wouldn't ski, be more ski, do a dab. Or... Ski. I, re- I refuse. Do a dab. I refuse. A straight refuse. We're we're gonna sit here until you do one. So no, see, I got fucking Washington State, Oregon State on. I could stay here all night. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that guy. Rap it down. There's nothing my kid Boom hates. Clot. There's nothing my kid hates more than when I do a dab. The dab is not a good, yeah. (laughs) But holy shit, do I love to do it. (laughs) Ski, give us one, man. Throw us a bone here, dude. What are you doing? You're killing, you're tearing this podcast apart. I am good. Good. Sink this podcast if you don't. It's tearing up our heart when we're watching you refuse to do the dab, and that's on you. 
No matter how we ask. He will not dab. Not for me or you. I should have started dabbing that. You should have! You wanted to, miss. You wanted to. Too. I hit the timing of it. When we hit, when we hit the boom, boom, yeah. boom, I could see it in your shoulders. Oh. <laughs> Everybody, come on, man. I guess you don't understand. <laughs> you don't understand <laughs> why Ski can't if, be if, Dabber. If, if Dabby was around back then, they would 100% have been doing it. Oh, they would have hit the dab so hard. Oh, so hard. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, Hell yeah. uh, let's see. All right. There's there's more number ones I haven't gotten to yet. Uh, let's see. So Lincoln City says Lincoln City 69 says I was thinking of something else, nice. uh, but he's seconding uh, yours, King. So <laughs> he agrees with yours. Uh, Booble says jam a crest white strip. In the <laughs> Go on. <laughs> in the tip of his dick. With an ice pick st sticking in like vice grip, hang it on a spike, fence bang it with a pipe wrench while I take my ball sack and flick it like a light switch. And who said this? <laughs> Booble said this. Oh, Booble. Booble wrote For a second, line, said guys. nutty in it. I was like, jeez, that, that came out of left field. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Booble, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> As one does. He also adds that... Uh, Kurt is a coward, and Ski is a coward. <laughs> coward! I'll dab you that. Coward! <laughs> <laughs> Every time we say coward, we got to do a dab. <laughs> Ski's a coward! New rule. New rule. <laughs> New rule. <laughs> All right, we need to leave. We need, yeah, to stop. we need to stop doing this. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. We dab all night. I know. You literally could. That's why I'm saying it. Uh, it's movie on Sunday. <laughs> movie on Sunday is, uh, what is it again? Saltburn. Saltburn. It, yeah, Salt it's, burn. On, it's on Prime Video, so watch okay. it. Listen to us talk about it on Sunday. Are we getting some dabs in here? We're bringing in dabs. Dog dab! <laughs> dog dab! We got dog dab! <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs> so stupid.